famous horse you are on hello hello let me go ahead and get my video for you then sick uh give me just a second can you give me one more quick test on the audio testing testing perfect perfect okay excellent um yeah let me get the video we'll, we'll do video here uh, we're just waiting for vera so um i'll get this set up and then we can start start talking about about tanky discourse because uh tankies oh they got treads folks they got a cannon they got a cannon they got metal they rust that's how it goes uh yeah vera should be here soon vera did say that that she was gonna hop in so all right so let me just get this also i need to set up the speaking with here we go famous horse oh wait i gotta do this on the other one famous horse is on twitch Famous horse is a twitchster, a twitchster. I'm a, tw I'm a twitchster, and You're I'm going to go ahead and put this up just for a little bit, and then I'm going to go back to writing a legal brief, which sucks, guys. If you've never done that, it really sucks. Fair. Let me just wait. Hold on. I think I can do this in a different... Hold on a second. How do I... Uh, what? No, wait. This is... Fine. This is the easiest way to do this. Okay. Very well, then. Here we go. Okay, there we go. Now you're up okay. on the screen. Okay, cool. Oh, I'm up on the screen. Yeah, big screen. Yes. So everyone can see my beautiful Naruto shirt. Yeah, we look at we, that. We love Kakashi, folks. We love hey, that's Kakashi. actually a sick-ass shirt. I really like that. Thank you. I got the Sharingan on the sleeve. You know, very nice. Hot Topic, 15 bucks on sale. Great hey, deal. not bad. By the way, see you soon, <laughs> Cyborg Jin. Hope to see you later. Thanks for the help. Um, do I want the font for those titles? Hell yeah. Uh, oh shit, yeah. Gina, that'd be amazing, because then I could do the- Oh, that'd be cool as fuck, Gina! Yeah, do that. Shoot me that- shoot me that file, and I'll install it, and then I'll be able to use it in OBS. <gasps> Based! Ooh. That'll be cool as shit. Oh! I need to- I forgot you can install fonts yeah, in OBS. Yeah, yeah, you can. Oh my god, I gotta do that. I've got a bunch of good fonts. Sick. Yeah, so, I got yeah. the- the D&D &D font. It's beautiful. We love the Dungeons & Dragons font. The D and D, the Do Not Discourse. What do you? What? No, no, Dungeons and Dragons. All right, here we go. Hello, right. hello, hello. Uh, Vera, you don't have to be on video if you if you don't want to. Um, but if you'd like to, um, we can facilitate that. Your call. Yeah, I'll skip video. I didn't really prepare. Okay. And ask Vera. Let me just make sure I get your your Twitch Twitch things right. Let's see, Twitch TV. Uh, TV forward slash famous horse and Twitch TV ask Vera. Right, it's just ask Vera, right? There's no numbers or anything. Uh, correct. Okay. For Twitch. Excellent, excellent. Pepe hey, thank Mons you so much for the names. tier one subscription, Ziltoid. Really appreciate that. Gifted to hey. Panes Maine. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. All right, so let's let's talk about the let's talk about tankies, because. Uh, I kind of can't stand them. And I know people say that the word doesn't have any meaning, but I feel it has at least as much meaning as the term like libs, where mm -hmm. it, it, it has some, you know, utility as a, uh, as a sort of shorthand for, you know, hyper authoritarian, mm -hmm. uh, genocide apologist type, uh, communists who, okay. uh, yeah. So, yeah. So so let's let's hear the thoughts and then I'll try to respond to them cuz I kind of Right. Yeah, I've been discoursing on this today already. So You've been discoursing. It. Yeah, do it. Don't make me tap the sign, mama. Oh no, no. I haven't well, listen. I I engaged in in one good faith discourse uh, no, no, I know. with y'all to and look, I I did I followed my rules and immediately invited you on my stream to have a good faith discussion. That, that, that's true. I'm just teasing See? you. I'm just teasing you. Yeah. I, I mean, I I, I think Vera had some very good points on okay. this. Um, but it it's sort of the thing that it has its meaning is going to depend on context. It's going sure. to depend on who's using it and what. And I I think to some people like you, tanky has a very clearly defined meaning. Mm. But I think it has, it's one of those words like neoliberal, for example, mm -hmm. that, you know, maybe has a meaning. You know, tanky goes back to the, to the English Communist Party, right, in the 50s. Um, but it's kind of diffused now across the internet. Like we were saying, like liberals now accuse anarchists of being tankies all the time. Oh, you yeah, say they're stupid as fuck. You say the left wing of we should nuke Iraq and someone will call you a tanky, right? And, 
And it's become this thing that's both somewhat meaningless and meaningful at the same time. It's become diffuse. And it's also been, like Vera said, like a entry point of Mm anti-communism, where now tanky is becoming this word that is used against anyone on the left for any reason. And it no longer has its uh, authoritarian connotations. Like, who would you consider a tanky? Um, People I would consider tankies? uh, Caleb Maupin. Um uh probably Bay Area four five one or whatever his name is. Uh giant tanky cringe lord. Um okay. I've 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 only seen his picture, so I haven't listened yeah, to Yeah, those are the types of people I think of. Uh probably Red Democrat or whatever their name is. Uh that person I consider okay. a tanky. Um Jason Unruh. Um Oh yeah. Unruh is yeah. a special case, yeah, uh, yeah. in my opinion. But he, like those are the types of people I consider tankies. Um, yeah, okay. Unruh, like, like basically, uh, I don't know, uh, people that I feel are like laughably, um, like divorced from what they profess to believe. Um, okay. and then just mostly just spend most of their time standing for various states across the world that have engaged in various types of atrocity, but they're not America. So they're okay with wrapping themselves in the flag and think that Mm -hmm. that's different but i don't really think there's much of a difference i basically basically if you want to understand what my what my vision when i think of the word tanky i think of um remember that remember that recent scene at the maga rally of the people like uh with the american flags wrapped around them dancing to rage against the machine yep Um, yep. yeah that's imagine that except uh just with like another state's flag wrapped around them that happens to have like had a communist history and then that that's the same thing that's like the exact same thing in my mind of what a tanky is yeah it's like a embarrassing oh oh yeah um like i think i I think it would be a stretch to call like mike from pa a tanky but i think Mm -hmm. uh mike from pa like leans in on that stuff sometimes like what with naming himself like central committee and having all the tank icons all over his screen but i don't think he's actually a pretty good representation because i just think like he doesn't have a coherent worldview so yeah but but yeah that's generally what i think of it of, of a tanky hence why i called uh bay area Four one five or whatever their name is, uh, Tanky Doomcock, and they they are. Yeah, tanky I didn't Doomcock. get the Doomcock part. But oh, yeah. well, you gotta watch the video because I explained Doomcock. Doomcock is a uh, actually pretty large uh, anti SJW YouTuber. Um, okay. Who has this weird um, like urinal looking mask that he wears? He wears like a wrestling mask that looks like a toilet. Um, and excuse me? I, I know i know it's really weird uh he has a rant sona that he like wears this like wrestling mask and it really looks like a toilet and then also um there is another youtuber who's very similar has almost the same build but is a uh-huh. nazi and makes videos on bit shoot instead and we're pretty sure that their name is it's commandant pretty sure it's the same person it's just that that's okay. his uh that's his mask off you know, well, okay, actually, so ma- interesting literally, mask literally mask on and then figuratively mask off. Yeah, but with a different mask instead. Instead, he wears with a, a gas ma- mask with a Nazi outfit. Like the guy literally wears like a Nazi get up. Oh, oh yeah. He's oh, a 100 percent cool. Nazi. So but but his videos are really similar. Like they focus on similar topics. The voice is basically the same. Chud did a whole thing. Uh, Chud Logic did a whole thing on exposing God. the Commandant Doomcock pipeline um and so we came one day completely randomly on stream i came across this um bay area 415 ml uh dprk flag in bio Mm -hmm. china flag in bio Uh old soviet union flag in bio um guy and i was like all right listen let's let's try and engage with this i go into his 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 videos and immediate just absolute larping he sounds exactly like like doomcog uses a voice changer um and then uh and then also huh. like two videos in he was denying genocide like literally just saying yeah like <laughs> like these fucking idiots think that there's uyghurs in camps and stuff fucking idiots buying into imperialist so, propaganda so i have a question sure yeah. let's say that this guy actually is doomcock mm-hmm. what do you think he's trying to do by putting on this tanky persona um i don't know is it does it matter like i mean he's probably he's he's probably succeeding at it uh, his goal is to is to like make make communists look bad, and uh, yes, and, probably. And he's probably succeeding at that because a fuckload of people that I know retweet this guy's videos and tweets. And so, damn, I guess I guess if somebody can LARP that hard and still be like accepted among a lot of like ML circles, and his his tweets can get retweeted onto my timeline, um, then yeah. So would you say that this is uh, from 
similar situation to say the necrophilia discourse um possibly yeah yeah which i also refuse to engage in as well <laughs> yeah um i would say it's about the same uh but but the difference is is that uh that like this tanky doomcock person is uh like the necrophilia discourse is like it's a bad look and if you engage in it you're biting onto a bait like to be trapped into into making yeah. yourself look bad whereas tanky doomcock is more like making people look bad by association i mean i don't think that he's actually doomcock it's just there's enough that there's enough of similarities that i yeah, i really we... think yeah um but like like but again like if he's being retweeted and liked and all this shit and again he keeps appearing on my timeline this is like the fourth or fifth time that i've had like mls that i follow who i'm really like good like I, who i appreciate and i think are cool people but who will retweet or or like and put this shit on other people's timelines i'm just like you know I'm, I I won't police likes, but I will start to be like, okay, here we go with the retweets. Like once you start retweeting, you're like, res you're, re you're boosting someone's content. And I'm just kind of like, this should be raising red flags for people. So I'm going to make fun of this guy. Like, I don't know. So I yeah. Mean, the, the tweet that they just linked in chat, like I, I don't see like the full issue with it, but it definitely, that does look more like bait because he's replaced uh, a couple of figures like Ho Chi Minh with she and uh, replace Kim Il-sung with Kim Jong-un. So, I mean, that, you know, that tweet right there, that might look like bait. But, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. Is there purpose? Is the purpose of someone like that to be a provocateur? Or, you know, what is it? And I, I think probably looking at this account that, um, I mean, he probably, you know, takes ML positions, extrapolates them a little bit, and then tries to do it, you're right, to, to kind of be bait. Well, I mean... I don't, I mean, I guess I would say that I, if this person is a bad faith actor, then uh, I would hope that people would see through that bait and not like unironically or uncritically like re repost his content and boost his reach. But right. do if, you ever read left Twitter? Oh yeah. Right. All the time. Yeah. Of course. And, and people, and people, they're going to, you know, they're going to see one or two tweets from this person and they're probably going to have tweets that are you know, solid lines and people are going to be like, Oh yeah, cool. It's going to show up in the world. I don't know. The one that and I saw retweeted was just an embarrassing, like the one I did, I, I got so mad about this actually made me so mad that I did a segment on mm -hmm. it, even though I wasn't even going to originally, I was just ranting to people about it. But, mm -hmm. uh, this, like this video the, he did this meme that was just so fucking stupid. It was this like Spider-Man meme. And on, I, I went over this on my last stream. Yeah. Of, like, I'm, I'm just scrolling through to see if I can Spider-Man meme of like, first of all, the glasses, it's just totally yeah. the wrong meme, wrong format, bad meme, and also a bad idea behind it. And yet, Oh my God. So many ML leaning people. I know like that, that thing got so much traction in ML Twitter. And I'm just like, you like, this is literally as if like somebody posted like a Ben Garrison comic. And then everyone was like, so based based. And I'm just like, Oh, come on. Like this, this, you have to be, be like, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I'm not holding it against anyone, but I'm just going to like, if I see somebody who's like a clown and making a clown of not just people that I care about, but of the general political like sphere in which I exist, I'm going to make fun of that person. I don't think that, so, I don't think we should support people like that. Or, and I think it's okay to call them a tanky. Two distinct issues here. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, one of which is sort of the, the broader tanky discourse and, you know, sort right. of what the implications of the term actually are. Mm -hmm. The other is like, what is this person doing and mm -hmm. you know what's a useful way to respond to them right like yeah, even if you're not using the word tanky you could still make the argument that you know some sort of response like this you know might be appropriate or might not be appropriate for other reasons mm -hmm. right I, I think this guy in particular i think it's worth having a deep dive into because even as an ml i'm looking at some of his stuff and you know some of it raises my hackles like you're saying like but i i think mostly he just seems suspicious. Like he's really, it feels really LARPy. Like oh, he's 100%. set up for his videos, him wearing the uh, the mask with the sunglasses and the suit. I mean, that reminds me of something I'd see from Armored Skeptic, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, 100%. Skeptic YouTubers, right? Well, well, but and I, that's the thing. I mean, that's why I said he was like tanky doomcock because he's like, playing I, I get the, that the, now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. playing the, the like the, the Soviet anthem while being like, oh, my fellow brethren please rise up fellow proletariat. And then in all of his other uh -huh. videos, he's talking about how he's like, Oh, I'm a, I have to keep my identity secret because I'm a high ranking lawyer in a San Francisco mm -hmm. law firm. And I'm just like, 
I mean, sure, sure, maybe, maybe he is, but it feels really LARPy, right? Yeah, it is LARPy. It's objectively LARPy. Like, I mean, it's objective as you can get with something like that. It's about as LARPy. It's like, if you were to find a definition of LARPy, that's about what it is. Um, but like, yeah. yeah. But if we want to get tanky, like, you know, tanky as a concept, I think that's where these two issues should be severable, right? If we're talking right. about um, specific bad actors and stuff like that, and then we're talking about tanky as a whole and vera made some very good points about tanky that i want to hear her elaborate but the first thing i always think about this is just the existence of mm -hmm. tanky and intra nisine fighting amongst the left like this and you know mls are just as guilty of it too as left comms or anarchists or whatever sure. where you know we'll say anarchities or make yeah. you know make memes about anarchists being stupid or not reading theory that that's not See that all the useful. time yeah but right, but, right. Yeah. And, and, but you yeah. know it's not useful to anyone on the left i mean it's different the only thing though that i would kind of like push back on that is that like i don't have shared interests with someone like bay area 415 i don't right. see myself as politically aligned with that person i don't see them as like okay. an ally or anything so i don't know why i should like just because they like wrap themselves in a flag like in the aesthetics of of like a movement that i could potentially agree with why i should um like treat them specially like like i would uh i would discord like I would discourse in good faith, like with a lot of MLs who I think that like, oh yeah, like, like, I think we have like common ground in a lot of ways, but I don't have common ground with the genocide denier. I just don't. And I treat them like a Nazi, like I would a Nazi. Um, maybe they're not as bad as like a Nazi, but they're pretty bad. Like, I think if you're in the position where your actions are like genocide denial or even downplaying genocide, I don't have any common ground with you and I have no problem like making fun of you and mocking you um and that sort of thing and i will do that like i mean that's sort of my position like um if somebody's like that i think we should discourage this from existing in the left and the way that you discourage it or at least the way that i can within the reach of what i can do is i can make fun of them and make a good argument right. that convinces people to not be like that because it's embarrassing mm -hmm. yeah. right and, and, let's and, let's come back to the to term and tanky and sort of the broader narrative behind it and the discourse because that's still severable from everything you just talked about Sure. I think right. it I think it probably is. Yeah. Um, so one of the biggest difficulties in doing this left Twitch, left Twitter thing mm -hmm. is sort of the tension between, I guess, self expression and PR. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and I mean PR in this I don't mean PR quite in the sense of optics. Um okay. I mean it in, in the sense of like communication strategy. Mm -hmm. um, like Got PR it. and propaganda are really the same thing, of course, actually, sure, sure, sure. but they, they do kind of have different implications. Um, but yeah, usually when most people talk about optics, that's like not really the important thing. Okay. At least what most people mean by optics, I think. Um, the, the bigger sort of, um, metagame, so to speak, is around, um, narratives and how they get reinforced by you know people acting as a group essentially mm -hmm. um and one of the big tensions is like one of the difficulties in being public speaking generally is of course like targeting your communication at your audience like your audience has some background understanding of the situation and of course you need to tailor your communication to that to the extent that you can right sure um Unfortunately, the, the effect of, to a certain extent, Twitch, much more Twitter, is, you know, context collapse. You have absolutely no control over who is reading, or no, really very little visibility even, into who is reading your content and, and how they understand it. it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Yeah, I can and agree with that. Out. But that's why like, I agree, and, like, that's why I think that, like, thinking through memes and and thinking through like the quote unquote propaganda like little tidbits of information that you drop is really important like um i mean that's also why i you know part of my twitter code is do not discourse is because i mm -hmm. think that like that does it's a context sucking machine but i don't yeah. think that um i don't think there's any context in which genocide denial is okay, okay. like so I, so that well sort of thing again is like, let, let's go back to the the issue of the tanky narrative slash discourse because okay, that's right. in, to my mind that's the issue here and not right. you know not these, the other context like i'm happy to dunk on this you know left doomcock guy sure sure mm -hmm. um but i think that using the tanky 
discourse to doing it is not helpful. Mm. It, it will ultimately bite us in the back. And oh, yeah. also, just to say real quick to Maranara, I mean, I have been called tanky numerous times for being an ML, and I don't view myself as being hostile to anyone else on the left, except for liberals. Fuck them. But, you know. But, I mean, so, like, here's the thing. Well, the other issue is oh. that, again, so the, the thing I'm getting to is that the you may have a very specific idea of what you mean by tanky and sure. do try to define it for your audience. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I think I'm pretty clear with my audience for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the basic problem is in the larger discourse that almost doesn't matter. Um, the term is used in such diverse ways that, you know, you can sort of add some spin to the ball, but you know, that spin basically goes against you know, sort of adds to the general um, narrative that is wielded against many different types of people. Well, um, I mean, maybe. Anarchists do get called tankies. I mean, I know. I've people. been, I got called a tanky by fucking LSP and I blew him the fuck out of the water and nobody saw his content and everybody saw my content. And I made it clear, you're barking up the liberal sanity project. He's a okay. cringe lord on Twitch. Right. Um but yeah, yeah. He, he barked so the up the wrong is, tree. Those sorts, of, those sorts of experiences are the tip of the iceberg. Like that, yeah, a lot maybe. more of that discourse is going on in spheres that you're less exposed to. And probably even now maybe. spheres that actually have power. Like I'm sure, and there are plenty of liberal think tanks nowadays with people that are adjacent to the Biden administration, they're talking about tankies. I would not be surprised. Maybe. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, it's really striking to me that this has penetrated the discourse so much that yeah, like uh, it's out there. Famous, famous horse's mother uh, apparently has been exposed to the tanky that's, discourse. That's exactly at this what point. I was going to say. Like six months mm. ago, my mother, who she has a Twitter account that she's only used like three or four times to post pictures of a dog. And she is completely disconnected. She barely uses Facebook. We are having breakfast together. And she's like, so are you a tanky? And I was like, Ex excuse me where did you hear that and she's like i i can't remember i just heard it and i was like what do you think it means and she's like i don't know and i'm like okay yeah. but you know it's out there it's permeated and the further it gets away from you know per people like you mama the less of the initial context and specificity it has and the further it travels away the more diffuse it becomes and then it ends up getting repurposed as a weapon in the hands of all of our enemies hmm. and then they turn that against us because now hmm. if this tanky has this connotation of a genocide denier or whatever you know hmm. um that's not something that you want levied leveled against you which may happen even for the the slightest critique of u.s foreign policy right maybe you maybe. say oh we shouldn't start a war with iran okay well you know iran is a repressive government you're a tanky you know that kind of thing right and, and maybe then it gets but, uh, but then again like uh, at the i've same... actually seen that happen by the way sure but at the same time it's like um like people levying the accusation of me being a tanky is laughable no matter how you slice it not only is it like do they not understand anything about like in like internal like differences among the left but like they probably don't yeah like, no, so here, here's right, the thing like the thing i'm concerned to... about is people who don't have like all the context, exactly. which is most okay. people. Right, it's um, laughable like one, one of the One of the struggles that a lot of people in the Twitch space I've seen have mm -hmm. is um, in dealing with, um, I'd say bad PR, but you know, sure. accusations and other things that stick to them because they're proceeding with the expectation that well, everybody knows their backstory. Everybody knows their lore. Everybody knows what positions they have. And even with their own, their own audiences, that's much, much less true than they think. Um, it's like fundamentally, most people are extremely clueless. And mostly what they're going by is sort of these vague um, narratives and images. They sort of have put together um, almost... Um, can't think of the word right now, but sort of ambiently, like, yeah. like the famous source's mother, 
for they're example. Cultural, yeah, they're cultural signifiers. And the thing is, you know, like I've studied a bit of political psychology when it comes to how people form their opinions about politics. Uh, affiliations are the biggest one, mm -hmm. but people retain emotions related to positions and mm -hmm. events and policies, mm -hmm. but they don't remember the actual thing. So okay. someone may remember tanky, tanky, sure. bad, 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 tanky, uh -huh. and then not know what that means. And then they see someone on the left they disagree with, and now that person's a tanky. Um, but, you know, that that's just sort of the analysis of how people do that. But I think it has broader implications for the left that I'll go into in a second that just damaging mm -hmm. in general. Hmm. Well, I have a and couple I, of. I don't think so. In the power. I kind of have a, a a couple of of thoughts on this, which is like, first off, um, I, I don't know like what degree anyone can control any term because I feel like all of these arguments again could be made for lib, a, a thing which people among the left use all the time. There are an enormous amount of people who consider themselves libs, and if you are raging against libs, there's a lot. There's in fact, um, I would argue a a a statistical majority of people who are going to assume that um, you're critiquing them from the right. If you're just like, oh, these liberals, these liberals. And in fact, that's yeah. a huge, that is a huge problem. So then, but, but that's like not, you know, that doesn't stop us from using the term lib. Um, and, so and there's sort of an attempt to reclaim that term. And I it's mean- It's not entirely dissimilar, yeah. but there are some like fundamental differences in terms of, you know, the, the liberal, liberals bad thing mm -hmm. is, at least nominally directed away from what we would call the left. Like right wingers right. don't make a distinction, mm -hmm. but well, I mean they don't make any distinctions. They think they think Joe Biden is a is a is a Chinese communist. Like literally, they mm -hmm. use the term Chicom. Like the, the the hard right thinks that they think Biden is a is a Chinese communist, which is right. just like absurd. Yeah, they absolutely. don't have any right, grip on reality. So like, we love but, it. but the yeah. essential thing is that the actual notion of liberalism or neoliberalism, even in their most debased forms, mm -hmm. are not part of an anti-communist narrative. That's exactly. not true of Tanky. And I, mean, I don't know, know anti-communism is something that affects all of us on the left. I'm an anarchist, but it's still you know, this stuff still fucks me in terms of like what I'm able to communicate and who I'm able to reach. Hmm. Um, right. I don't know that I like, agree though, because like at least, I mean, maybe it's starting to percolate outwards, but at least in my experience over like years and years on the internet, like tanky has always been very much an interleft term. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, given that I'm mostly speaking to a left, already left-leaning audience, and of course I'd like to expand my reach, but hey, if I expand my reach, then they're going to be getting the good definition of tanky, right? Like they're going to be getting the definition of tanky that is, hey, this is a term that we use pejoratively to insult well, people who are like genocide deniers. Like the as same you way just that said, I it's yeah. not really possible to control the way, th especially not as an individual uh, streamer, mm -hmm. to control the... Um, sort of way a term is used. And again, right. here the issue is not so much the um, surface level connotations or denotations of the term. Mm -hmm. The issue is more of an unspoken narrative that underpins it that is been built and is being spread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I understand though, like, like, I don't know. I understand why people have a bad connotation with uh, like Stalinism um like with like like what we would generally associate with t with like tankyism like highly militaristic uh highly authoritarian um quote unquote communism i would argue that it, that's kind of a stretch to call it communism and i'm sure this is somewhere where i see i don't really see eye to eye with with every ml or whatever mm -hmm. um but i can understand why people have a bad association with that and i don't think that's necessarily yeah, the, a bad the, thing, the thing is, shouldn't we be aiming to like not further associate ourselves like at, in see, general with that's that? That is the second argument I was going to make because that is a purely, mostly an American phenomenon. And like I was talking with, uh, like is I had Vincent that? Bevins on okay. the other day. If you're familiar with him, he's he wrote about the extermination of the left globally okay. at the hands of the CIA. In yeah. Indonesia, they the CIA had three million communists killed in about six months. They right. killed all the, the CIA communists. Is they fucking get on terrible, their hands. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but but yeah, this yeah. is you know this was part of this global program. And to them, and to the people who are enemies, of course, there is no distinction between a Marxist-Leninist or an anarchist. Either way, you're or an a enemy. liberal who's just too or far left. Yeah, like, right. Or a liberal kill who supports healthcare. Yeah. They'll kill yeah. anyone. And and they murdered millions of people. But right. that's but the point is. Um, we were the hegemon in the Cold War. We Magritte. were the aggressor. So when you go 
to um, you t like he was telling me about the that's, communist but parties but in Chile. Not, but I, I well, see. Well, I here, feel this like is this what is... I want to. This is what I want to get okay, at. Okay. To them, Stalin or Mao or all those people have totally different connotations. To them, it's take it or leave it. Right? It's not the same way where. In those countries, if you're a leftist, you don't immediately get put on the defensive and have to say, well, I don't like the USSR, I don't like this, I don't like that, it's all bad, and disassociate yourself. That's not the same thing. It's, it's a thing that's a purely American phenomenon. And, and it's specifically the product of an anti-communist narrative okay, that was built during okay, the Cold okay, War. But see, here, hold on, though. This is where I start to get into the, the frustration um, okay. with with some mls and this this almost inevitably comes up when i talk with mls which is that like yeah. i mean like i recognize that there's like a lot of cia propaganda um and like i don't ingest like american propaganda without question ever like this is my entire job is tearing apart fucking bullshit american propaganda i fucking have no love for the american state um but like I also don't have any, I don't see any need or love to like extra defend like Stalin or Mao. Like, I sure. think that these are people who, um, you know, as far as I can tell, did indeed engage in some incredibly uh, questionably moral acts, whether so, that was for, so whether that was one for of a greater good or not. The effects of the tanky discourse, though, is okay. it basically forces people to take sides. Ex exactly. And rather than us as the left, Wait, Just but 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 so it has a polarizing effect. Yeah, but essentially. it has a but there's a, but it's not an unjust polarization. I think that somebody who is like hyper apologetic for a fucking a state that first of all they're they have no association with, like in the case of like um of the so people what that I'm I arguing like, here is that hmm. you know as sort of a wedge narrative, mm -hmm. it you know as these conflicts start to happen, mm -hmm. people harden in their positions, and you'll definitely find even in the course of like a single panel, someone once people get into these um these conflicts around sort of the image of the tanky, as it were, mm -hmm. that people will start to harden their positions. And in some cases, like Red Democrat, you know, maybe it's a bit more of a mask off thing. But in yeah, other but... cases, um, like these are people who fundamentally are getting defensive and digging themselves in a hole that they otherwise would not have dug mm -hmm. in terms of the ML side. I mean, At maybe, same... I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, this is a thing that I can't understand entirely because I'm I'm not an ML. But oh, like... this is not an ML thing. Like, you will find it's this is a universal phenomenon of when you have um, sort of a wedge issue that's used to divide the good ones, quote unquote, from the bad, the bad. ones. Well, yeah, but like, but the, but those wedges have, have to exist. Not decide. Well, but those, but those, 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 like, those we have to make those those wedges we we have to there's like this idea of like left unity is is an illusion first of all there's it's not an issue of left unity. Well, but it is, is though it when you're when 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 ml like when an ml faction is asking me to not criticize their worst actors that they often still there's support. there's a difference between criticizing okay but that calling them a tanky i think is perfectly fair like i don't know like this is the thing i don't think that it's like i feel like here's what i feel like and and this is a little bit like hard to con to like to make like this is just in my personal experience like so there's no data yeah. i can pull on on this but it feels to me like what like a lot of mls really like that they 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 really like like self-identifying as a tanky and they just want people to not think that tanky is a bad word is like a bad thing but it is a bad thing being like being a a apologist for like a, a, a re that's what you say a tanky is that's not what a tanky is right but if, if somebody comes to me not what a tanky is in the narrative well but if somebody and comes up and you can't have it your way you cannot control what this term means or what it does in the larger discourse you've said that yourself I mean, nobody can do that with any word, and yet, nonetheless, we use words all the time. Like, we use words That's like live right. all the time. But, you know, these words have different narratives built around them. They have different practical effects in the narratives and the discourse right. that are built around them. Sure. And so you have to treat these on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay. The so argument what is, the, what is the harm, then, that I, that, like, okay, so if you're making a case that I should not use the term tanky, then um, what what is the, what is the, the like, the, the the harm that occurs from that 
Like, what is the actual thing that that's at risk from me using the term tanky to describe people with, and when people ask me, oh, what, what do you think a tanky so is? So the specific clear. harm is, so, you know, tanky, in, as it actually exists, is this very nebulous thing that applies to a lot of different groups okay. of people. Um, and every bit of energy that you sort of put into this um, tanky is bad thing mm -hmm. doesn't just get directed at the people that you intend to target. It gets directed at sort of that broad, you know, everyone that that sort of conception of tankies touches. And this is a difficult to argue and take on an individual level, because this is very much like a wear a mask kind of argument. Like you as an individual, whether you do or don't, is probably not going to make that big a difference. Yeah, but right. there's, in my opinion, well, still a pretty strong argument that well, um, we should normalize not using tanky to make these arguments. Well, here's the thing. Like, um, like uh, I, I think that in order to make the claim that like tanky has like X um, perception on a large level, like I don't think there is a like a, a wider mainstream understanding of what a tanky is. I think most people have never encountered that word. Now, maybe there's some edge cases, maybe something like your mom, but it sounds to me like in the case with your mom, like that was pretty easy to dispel. Likewise, it was incredibly easy for me to dispel um, someone levying me the accusation of tanky. And in fact, it not only was easy to dispel, it also gave me a platform to explain people what I believe is important about leftism, why it's completely absurd to call somebody like myself or anybody who shares views like me a tanky. Um, and like, I feel like that was nothing but utility. So it, it's like... Yeah. So I mean, bear in mind that you what you're I mean? seeing so like, directly is the tip of the iceberg. Well, how? And, but you right. have to. But you have to substantiate that, don't you? Like, if that's the claim, well, then what? Where is the actual? You say it's the tip of the iceberg, but that's just a claim. Where's the evidence of that claim? Well, where's the rest one of the iceberg? Thing, again, like I have had the experience of being called a tanky. Many anarchists have had the experience of sure. being called tankies at different times. Sure. Like this is something that is clearly ambient in the discourse. It's mm -hmm. not. But I you mean, know, who's calling, like, who's doing this? Like, like, I don't know. Like, that's the thing. We have to determine if we're going to make a claim like that, we have to determine who it is. Like, I think that, like, there's a very small segment of, like, um, like, sock in bio, um, sock dem Twitch that is like, oh, yeah, they, they picked up the word tanky from watching, like, a random video and they have no idea what they're talking about and they're just looking for Twitter dunks. Maybe those people. But again... That happened There's to some me. Of that, Somebody made a video can, about me. We can trace. We can trace the dissemination like, of it though, pretty pretty sure. easily. Okay. Yeah. Right. One like, of the specific difficulties I've had. So I have a an old friend who's sort of you know come come somewhat left and okay. the um in the sort of uh you know watching bread tube space and that kind of thing. Okay. But one of the specific things that she got hung up on was, and again this is anecdotal of course, but I think it's an illustrative example. Okay. Um. One of the specific things she got hung up on is like she has a lot of, let's say, reservations around revolutionary politics. Fair. And to her, and I, I have not been able to get her over this hump, okay. there's sort of this, you know, nexus of images around revolution that mm -hmm. are very specifically tied up in the image of the tanky. Right. Um, but she tanky. wouldn't necessarily call, you know, anarchist tankies as such. Mm -hmm. But when a an revolutionary anarchist, like when she's exposed to that, she's like, no, this this sounds, you know, authoritarian or tanky or whatever. And right, without a whole meaning. I, I can't, I, mm -hmm. I have not been able to, because this is one of the problems with these sort of um, images is that they're very hard to dispel unless, you know, like, so Demon Mama, your audience, when you're like directly addressing those, for a variety of reasons, is favorably situated to you know have that maybe more productive conversation with sure that's not the tr in my experience at least it's not the case more broadly hmm. um this sort of image of you know the revolutionary tangy is something that is wielded against like left revolutionary politics as a whole someone and like sankara hmm. And if if the, if someone is exposed to that first, it is sort of an, to some degree, an inoculation against a lot of um, 
left revolutionary positions, it's very hard to entangle because it's not like a reasoned position. It's a very like deeply embedded emotional image, essentially. Yeah. And like I was saying that these politics for most people form of they, they, they remain as emotional reactions to things. And like, you know, we're saying like we can trace the history of this. The tanky really started being used in popularity uh, more popularly around 2016, 2017 on left book groups. Um, a lot of anarchist left book groups. And it started spreading from there. And that's where it first became popular was in left book before kind of taking over on Twitter and then diffusing more generally. I just dropped a link to it in here, but there's a group called Definitions of Tanky, where it just shows just different screen caps of people misusing the word. Mm -hmm. And if you look through that, the, the definitions have nothing in common. So would you think that uh, do you would you think that the same would apply for something like Radlib, like which I see tossed around at all and is is in my opinion like to a degree. Like because I think when people say like a Radlib, usually to me like that comes off as like oh like. I'm sneering at like your identity politics kind of position. So if that's the case, I, then I it... wouldn't say identity politics, but more of just like weak politics. But it certainly mm. is used as identity politics. If your audience is familiar with um, the worst Australian alive, Amy Therese. Yeah, fuck uh, Amy Therese. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we love Amy Therese. She's the worst human to ever live. And I lost one of my best friends over Amy Therese because Damn. he loves her for some reason. I'm like, no, she's a fucking Nazbol. Yeah, your friend Stay might be a LA. Nazi. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. And. He is now, so well, we're not friends go. anymore. There you have it. But, yeah. um, right, but it has the same sort of connotation, not connotation, but same sort of implications in that it is used as a pejorative on interlap discourse, Radlin. Mm. Uh, the thing is, it doesn't have the same sort of emotional or visceral weight as tanky, because when someone is a tanky- It's also not aimed in the same a, direction. It's aimed at the opposite. It's to aimed towards the center, usually, rather than towards the left, but I mean, also see, I disagree. That's where I disagree. I feel, I feel like- this is maybe and maybe this is just a, a definitional like we have different definitions of the left but i don't Perhaps. see radlib so, so, so to be clear i i don't use the term radlib and i do discourage people from using it because it's, it's it is useless. in a different direction mm -hmm. but it also does become a weapon against for example intersectional politics right. yep yep so it's, it, it's it's not a it's not identical like it's yeah. not pointed in the same direction doesn't create exactly the same problem but it definitely is a similar um, mm -hmm. emotional uh, weapon, so to speak, that people sort of charge up by using mm -hmm. and then gets directed by hegemony at whatever's, you know, actually serves its interests. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, and that's what, sorry, sorry. No, no. I, the, the other thing is like, um, like, I don't know, I guess. I guess this all comes down to like where you judge the, 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 like, understanding of a term and i i don't know i i guess uh i don't see the same degree of like tanky being used as effectively as general anti-left sentiment i see it more as like um anti hardline authoritarian and i'm okay. actually okay with that i'm okay with people um not um being a fans of of like hard violent authoritarianism i'm actually really okay with that so um, I'll, I'll kind of half agree with you. Yeah. Like it's down in, the road. in like our immediate circles, like the circles that you and I share. Sure. Uh, I think that's largely true. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't ever hear it used out of there, but I could be wrong. Yeah. The, I, I see it a lot, but I follow random people. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the, the sort of broader context that I've seen is it's a very different picture. Hmm. Well, and the I'm other certainly... thing, too, is, you know, it's, again, it's not so much about the definition of the term, because, again, once we get, to, like, to the average person who's exposed to it, they're not operating on the level of definitions. They're mm -hmm. operating on the level of sort of, like, images and emotional associations. Mm -hmm. Image of the enemy. So then, okay, so then would you also feel the same way about people, like, self-identifying as a tanky? Wouldn't you argue that's, like, like doubly like at least doubly as as uh as damaging as someone using it as a like a pejorative like if somebody's like uh, ironically saying like yeah i'm the tanky. i discourage people from doing that yeah it's not it's too, not a but... good I, it's not a good idea and most of the time I, almost everyone do... every almost every every ml i know does this 
Well, yeah, you know so what? This is this is an I, I don't I don't I don't yeah, and I don't encourage it, but it's the same sort of thing where it's like, well, if people are gonna call me a tanky, then I'm gonna call myself a tanky, and that's oh, kind okay. of how a lot of that is. But I, it's it's not usually it's not like yes, I am proud to take this label. It's you know it's more of like, well, hey, well, you're gonna call me that. But I, I think still, like the biggest issue with this the one is thing, the one thing it doesn't yeah. tend to do is that they're not like adding to the sort of negative energy associated with that directly. Like at mm -hmm. some level, they're sort of trying to reclaim and diffuse it. Which... But into what? What is the what is the reclamation goal of reclaiming? That's like trying to reclaim. Yeah, Nancy, well, that right. Well, who, who, I don't know. See, I, like, I, don't, I, I, I just quite say so, but you know, ultimately, that's you know, that gets to the issue of why. It discourage people from doing that yeah mm -hmm. i mean it's probably best to avoid avoid the term in general but yeah. you know but really my main point with this too is it's a little different than bears and it's just that this in general is just a symptom of the position the left in the west specifically the united states has been mm -hmm. forced in as a result of the cold war where now it, it is a symptom of us always being on the defensive where basically at any given time we have to like you know, for the longest time, I didn't want to, I was afraid to call myself a socialist when I was a teenager because I was like, well, what if somebody asked me about the USSR? What am I going to say the USSR is bad about this and that? Yeah. And you're right. And, and, you know, it puts us in a bad position on the defensive. And then when we try to explain our politics and we get put on the defensive like that, people tune out. If I start explaining, well, I'm different than this because of that and whatever, who gives a shit? People Maybe. aren't going to listen. I mean, and, yeah, my, my thing it, is just the other out. thing. That's like, the, there's... I hate quoting Reagan, but you know, if you're explaining, I mean, you're losing. Like exactly. basically, exactly, exactly. If you're, if you, because people don't want to, they don't care about the distinctions necessarily. There are some people who care, but most of the time, if you are in the position where it's why part of the reason the Democrats always lose because they're always on the defensive because the Republicans are always attacking them, they're always hammering them, they're always calling them socialists, oh. and they're that's, like, oh no, a... we're not. Well, I mean, I mean, but that's see, maybe that's just like a different approach then. Maybe that's a difference in approach between like all all of us here. Because like when somebody comes into my chat and is just like, "What about the USSR? What about Mao? What about Vuvuzela, Venezuela? Blah blah blah." Uh -huh. Then I just go, "What the fuck are you talking about? I'm talking about American the way forward for America right now. I, the way that we build a better world going forward. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about with this fucking 1950 Red Scare bullshit." And that ends right. it almost every and single time. That's, that's a pretty good, good approach, and yeah, that's not explaining. Good. Yeah, I don't. I but I don't. I exactly. don't feel like it's I need not, to explain to somebody who's engaging in bad faith. But I don't think. I don't think that that necessarily like means that I can't fucking call a a larping, uh, literal genocide apologist a fucking tanky if you know like and get utility. Well, I'm it. not saying you can't. I'm saying yeah. it's unadvisable. Well, maybe. And, and that's well, that's mostly fun. that's mostly my position too it's not yeah. that it's going to ultimately it's not going to destroy the left if we call people tankies it's not gonna you know be this apocalyptic thing but mm. it is something that will ultimately be unhelpful in the long run and likely be used well against it's us in some unhelpful way. now like it and it is used against well, yeah. the left now um but more so long term is it's the way i imagine mm. yeah it, and so just, the, i did want to add as far as the um you're you're explaining your losing thing. It's it's not just that people right. like you know are lazy or don't care. There's like a fundamental thing in cognitive science about how you approach misinformation. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's like a bunch of heuristics that people use to sort of uh, cognitively t to get a sense for whether information is reliable. Mm -hmm. um, and you know some of those are obvious. Like is this coming from someone you trust? Um, does it basically make sense with, you know, the rest of the things, you know, or think, with you know, world, yeah. um, mm -hmm. is it like simple to understand? Because like, there's sort of an intuitive heuristic, like if someone is like, um, and there are memes about this, or if someone just like explaining and explaining, explaining, you start to wonder or start to feel like maybe they're pulling something over on you. Mm hmm. And um, the same reason people inherently distrust salespeople. Like I did sales for a long time, and mm -hmm. when people give this long pitch and they explain, and the benefit of direct TV is going to be this, and you're going to get this, and you're going to get this, people tune yeah. out and their hackles raise because they feel like something bad is going on. They're being uh, 
having one pulled over on them in some way, even if they can't identify it. So when you're over explaining or defending or whatever, mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't work to change. Yeah, I mean, I just mind. don't I don't feel any need to defend anything about about China or Russia like sure. ever. I sure. ne and, never need to. And like, and, 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 and the same way I don't around. ever need to defend America. Like, I mean, that's the thing. When I turn this around in another way, it's just like, um, like, like, like if somebody was like, oh, America sucks, I'm not going to be like, well, well, you have to actually have to understand America. And like when people do that, I would make fun of them. Like I would just be yeah, like, hey, come on, stop fucking kissing the yeah. ass of the American state. It's just a fucking state. Like, anyway, anyway yeah. to bring it back around, like I, I was actually trying to, to praise you in a way, um, which is that what you were just saying in terms of, you know, moving on and not like trying mm -hmm. to um, get in the mud with the trolls, so to speak, on that mm. is exactly the right thing because you're basically, yeah, you're, you're doing a bunch of even sort of nonverbal things there that are um, serving to sort of ca uh, counteract that narrative in that case. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's my general approach because, I, like, I, I've talked about this on stream before, too, which is just, like, I mean, I think that a lot of, like, right-wing uh, demagogues and people who've been following right-wing demagogues tend to operate on, like, I call it, like, the spewing pipe. Like, it's just a pipe spewing garbage all over the place, yep. and you just don't fucking, you, you can't clean up the garbage until after you close the pipe. And the way you close the pipe is by fucking slamming a thing down and it's saying, shut the fuck up and get out of here. Now, any mm -hmm. of you have questions about all this garbage that's been blasted over the wall? Well, now I can explain it for the people who are actually here to learn. Right. Um, but, like... And that's the right way to approach it. You can't win against the Gish Gallop. You, you, can't, yeah. you can't refute each one of those things. You have to shut them up first. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, uh... Yeah, I, I think um I think I'm open to the idea that like um that like the term tanky could have some like uh overall negative effect. I just don't know if I'm sold on that position being there. And what I see right now though is like uh I see a troubling amount of attention being given to people that I think fall very squarely into a into a a relatively easy to digest um, definition of tanky people who I think are not my allies, people who I think are actually my abject enemies. If their world, if their world was made possible, if Bay Area 415's world was made possible, the world would be an agonizing wasteland worse than it currently is. And like, um, if 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 like somebody like fucking Amy Therese their worldview was realized, the world would again be a, a fucking horrible wasteland. Like these people are like not they are not my allies and so again when it comes to stuff like that i don't know i'm okay with directing general uh social displeasure in their general direction um i guess it'll just be a matter of of sort of doing the calculus on whether the term tanky is actually effective at doing that i think it can be um i definitely think it depends on the on the context um, and maybe, maybe my audience has too broad of a reach, but it feels like most people who watch my videos understood what I was getting at there. And in the video itself, like, um, even though I only really, I call him a tanky in the video a lot, but I pretty, I was pretty clear to explain what I thought of as a tanky in that video. Um, and I don't know that just my video title is necessarily contributing to a general, like, um, like anti left thing. Um, well, I mean, this, this comes back to the, um, wear a mask thing again, yeah, like yeah. as an individual, like this one thing, it's, it's not going to be the make or break kind of thing, sure. but it's still something to think about because it mm -hmm. really is a thing where like the group behavior is really what matters. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is the issue is not so much like what the specific definition of tanky is. The issue is that there's this existing um, narrative with emotional associations that sort of underlies any specific definition. Mm -hmm. um, we need a is new term. There. We need a new term that hasn't yeah. been poisoned yet, and uh, let's call them. Hmm, let's call them tanksters. Call them. Call them. Call them bay areas or something yeah, like that. I don't know. We do we, like I don't know the new term, but see that's the thing is so catchy. Tanky is so catchy, but well, like that's why it's been used. Yeah, but like the thing is, it's like it's like I don't know. And and this is one thing that that like this is my critique. I've I've levied this critique at other MLs. Like my my one critique of like or one of my critiques of like the the ML community online is they seem very very willing to circle the wagons around. Um, 
problematic members of the community sometimes. And I mean, um, isn't that all online communities? Though, yeah, the but there's part? certain ones like 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 how the fuck does how the fuck does somebody like Bay Area four five one even get to the point where he has like four thousand followers without people going, what the fuck is this fucking dumb shit saying? This guy is making us look really bad. And like. Um, I mean, there's there's an issue of sales funnel here. So, like anyone who's establishing a presence online mm -hmm. is going to, like, and and knows what they're doing at some at least intuitive level, is going to be constructing their discourse in a way that um, attracts the sort of people they're interested in, who right. are susceptible to their messaging, and repels the people who are not. So mm -hmm. it's you know, at least if we're talking about like you know, 4K followers and that sort mm, of tier. Yeah. It's not very hard to like, you know, scrape the bottom of Twitter and find those people once you get an in into those right, circles. Right. Well, I mean, I mean, and that is something that I see a lot with like, like MLs. I mean, there seems to be a kind of no comrades under 1K effect where like the second a new ML account pops up, it's just like 4,000 followers flood in. But I feel like that's I a, noticed. yeah, I mean, but that's like, that's like something that I, I don't know, like, Maybe it's just a difference in approach. Maybe I, I don't think all all communities are like this, but I do worry of so there there is a factor of that too. Like there's there's a certain amount of like you know solidarity among MLs that I've seen where people will oh if they're an ML I'll follow them, and yeah. well MLs feel there's, there's sort of two yeah there, there is kind of a that sense as well. Yeah. I mean, um, I I'm speaking I'm perpetually, we, perpetually besieged. I know. No, well, no I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, and, I'm and kidding a little bit, but yeah, yeah, but, but that you know that sensitive. ties into our worldview as well. That we feel like you know a lot of the worst things that some of these countries have done was because they were besieged, right? So, so MLs definitely do have that kind of siege mentality. Not all of us, yeah. but some of us definitely do. I, I just think it, uh, like I mean, I think I think, but I think MLs like that need to just reanalyze certain aspects of their worldview. Because I don't think I don't think they're gaining I don't think MLs who defend uh like who who like hardcore stand Stalin's actions and shit are actually like it feels like they're they're taking their anti-Americanism to a degree like of where it's like like oh I I think the American I agree the American Empire is fucking trash but that doesn't mean that other nations can't also be bad these are other world yeah. powers that were jockeying yeah. for control of so, the world so this is also a larger issue in online left discourse essentially uh -huh. people um, double and triple down yeah oh yeah on, oh yeah sure on their positions right. um, out of a variety of motives, many of which really don't have that much to do with their politics per se, although it does over time shape their politics potentially. Mm -hmm. um, and that's actually another reason why they sort of, we, I think, need to be careful about, um, you know, that we're laser focused about when we're really, when we're being very antagonistic because the wedges that can get driven in the terms of like these intra-left discourse things yeah um can harden people into some pretty awful positions because you know there there's some other wedge that maybe wasn't even more important to them but was more in their um you know immediate line of sight that they end up coalitioning with certain other people based on that specific wedge and backing into some really horrific politics huh. on on the back end yeah. and i mean i try to know, coalition they're... build based on action and advocacy like people that i see that i can work with are people who i think their actions and their advocacy actually lines up with mine i don't really care what people call themselves um and and i don't know maybe some of this just comes from like my background of like coming up in like a really extreme religion i don't know like for me it's like mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who will um adopt the aesthetics of such of such and such a position um and not actually any of the values or not really have any clear values or be really slippery oh, yeah. with those values it's a it's aesthetic and, it's aesthetic yeah. for a lot of people yeah, yeah, and that, that's, that's and one that's of the larger scary. issues as well is that online political tendencies are fandoms, really. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, that's fair. Exactly, yeah. and, and that's that's one of the reasons, like it, you know, if somebody and, and really unfortunately, these these fandoms, because as people sort of build their identity around them, they do um, 
shape people's politics as well. Of yeah. course, yeah. I mean, but like, I mean, there's like, I've, there's a reason why I always just when people ask me, oh, well, what do you, what do you what do you describe yourself as? I'm a leftist who leans, you know, who leans into like anarchist philosophy. I really think yeah. anarchist philosophy is interesting. That's how I view myself, mm -hmm. and I think that's a pretty honest like analysis of how I view myself. Um, but also like, yeah, and like, that's the same reason that I usually don't claim a tendency. Like, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. If, if I really had to, if I was forced to like define myself anarcho communist, probably, but that's not something I ever put up on. I don't wear it on my sleeve and I'm not like hard committed to that specific label. Hmm. Yeah. And I guess for, for basically yeah. the same reasons that you articulated. Yeah. And I, 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 I don't know. Uh, like yeah i i guess my my thing is that i i feel like it should not be hard for anyone claiming to be a leftist to be able to denounce like uh horrible behaviors on the behalf of massive authoritarian states right. like even if you think that there was like some misunderstanding of that state or mm -hmm. some disinfo there's there's a place for those conversations like i think mm -hmm. for sure do i think that there's like like literally prop like unbelievable propaganda about like china and and about the ussr even at its worst moments obviously like the u.s right. literally had like an entire red scare like it's it's influenced like one of the biggest game series of all time is built off of right. the aesthetic of anti-russian propaganda so i get that yeah. but like so, so we can't one of the, the other we one of the other things that comes up in those situations is you know not there's not just the issue of the discourse but the well, when a lot of times when we're talking about like why or these things that happened like we know happened um there's also right. narratives that come along with those as far as why those things happened yeah, yeah. Right. and often the prevailing narratives are not necessarily that useful like yeah. for example mm -hmm. in the case of the soviet union and stalin mm -hmm. a lot of people like sort of unquestioningly accept like a great man narrative about that and don't think about like how those things actually played out from the standpoint of right. like ideology and like more specific political things that happened. Because at the end of the day, like these, you know, single great leaders are figureheads for, you know, political coalitions behind them. Mm -hmm. And, and that are motivated. Yeah. Well, but but specifically though, like I, I think that we could recognize that like like that's especially true when you have an ideology that has inherent like an inherent hierarchical structure, right? Like obviously, there's always like we, I think there's a certain tendency in history for us to want to simplify and clean up narratives to make it clearer, to make a more clear oh, yeah. thing. But I think also like like I think also we can acknowledge that like hey, if you um if you build a movement that has like a a strong hierarchical inner structure, that's how that's how that movement's going to unfold. Like we see this on the right as well. Like why do you think they're all aligned behind Trump? When we look back at history, people are going to real are going to go, yeah, they all fell in line behind Trump. And even if Trump really wasn't the only actor there, the fact of the matter is that the coalition was built on a hierarchy that ultimately the buck stopped with Trump. And I think that stuff like that can happen with like characters like Mao or Stalin, where like they built personality cults as a part of their movement and that shaped the movement as well. Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with, with, with identifying those things and saying, hey, like this is actually a, a potential flaw that could lead to really bad outcomes. Mm -hmm. um, and then this well, is- Well, there's, there's two things that get usually get missed in that discourse. Sure. One of which is like a, a deeper analysis of like, okay, so hierarchy is bad. In what ways does it do that? How does that, did that actually play out in the situation? Sure. Well, I mean, like, and those, I mean, that but, becomes a deep dive yeah. on history, which I think is a perfect a thing. But I, I mean, I don't think that we can deny- Instead, the conversations that end up getting had is basically like Stalin fans versus Stalin anti-fans. Right. And, and it's and very they, focused no, no, no. on the personality or really the image because, you know, Stalin's fucking dead. Right, and, right, you know, sure. But I mean, but I mean, this is part of like trying to reach synthesis on like historical, like on or, or not even synthesis, but trying to reach and and like and identify, an yeah, an understanding of of what things have gone wrong. And I don't know if it's necessarily so, Stalin fans versus anti stands. I mean, or, or stands versus anti stands. I mean, I don't feel like I'm an like an anti stan for saying like I fucking hate like basically every American president. I think they're all terrible. I don't think that makes me like an anti stan. I just think I just recognize that like. 
an executive power is a is like a fucking bad thing that has tons of bad out, outcomes. So I don't really know that I would be an anti stand for saying that I like, but for being like well, Stalin I'm, I'm seems not like a shit about dude. You so much as the broader structure of the broader. discourse. Like well, these are the general not trends. Specifically, not specifically you. Right. I, I, there's something I want to add in a second when you're done there. Sure. Uh, go on. So, so basically, I was just I was talking about in a little bit in chat here, and I think part of the issue we're seeing. So we were talking about earlier how ideologies become very much fandoms for a lot of people, and uh -huh. there's a lot of reasons for that. People are very alienated. People don't like reading, uh -huh. and people kind of you know. We've also been socialized to do that as right, fundamentally. Right, right, right. Yeah. And America is very America in specific is very kind of fandom based. Like political parties are like that in our country. Well, yeah, yeah. But kind of, but kind of what happens is so people don't have a cohesion cohesive understanding of theory, which is why you might see someone be a conservative one day, an ML next, and then an anarchist, and then a Maoist, you know, and mm -hmm. those people are rare, but we see that. But ultimately, I think what a lot of this comes down to in the lack of nuance is when, okay, so say I've been brought up with pure anti-communist mm. propaganda my entire life. Mm. I start digging a little bit. So basically find, everyone in America. Right, right. So mm. I'm talking about ML specifically sure. and why some of them are so hard -lied. So I start digging a little bit, right? Uh -huh. And I find out this thing about the Soviet Union was untrue. For example, like they weren't the aggressor in the Cold War, something like that, right? Sure. And then once you start unraveling that little bit of truth, you lose any sort of trust in any of other any other sources from the West and any other authoritative okay, but academic see, but sources. that is that is in my mind that is like bl like like black pilling yourself like no 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 the I'm idea not that nothing can, not I mean because good. like here's the thing like I can I can acknowledge that like uh British historians like by and large like lied really really badly and covered up right. the, the 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 sins of of Winston Churchill without going oh, oh of course. that means any any book written in the English language or translated into the English language is by definition not accurate and that actually right. means that like like you know what I mean like you you can't take I, it I'm so not, far I'm that you become a conspiracy I'm theorist that, I'm not saying I'm going it that far but i'm saying okay. that does kind of happen to people where in my case now i have an inherent distrust but i rein it in i try to remain reasonable but i'm saying for a lot of people i think especially with the fandom mentality it is very easy once you go down that rabbit hole to end up like a conspiracy theorist where you don't trust anything anymore and the next thing you know you're fucking phil greaves you think germs germ theory was invented by the nazis and that genes don't exist yeah which is a real fucking thing that a real guy believes yeah, and he has like 15k of... followers. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, don't I mean, get me started on the yeah. germ theory shit. But yeah, but that's yeah. an example. That's an example of it because people, once they have their identity formed around a fandom or an ideology or a tendency or whatever, mm. that becomes an integral part of themselves as a person. And we've done studies on this. If you have a belief, say for whatever reason, Dima Mama, you uh -huh. believe that cats are a type of dog. And yeah. you really fucking believe that. Sure. And then I give you some studies. Actually, cats evolved from this, this, and this. Uh, statistically, you are going to disregard that information and just believe that cats are a type of dog more strongly. And well, that's just I might how push people back. Work. I mean, yeah, it does depend on learning. I think a lot of that is, I mean, that's a lot of, like, getting into, like, theory of learning and all kinds of things. Right. Like, but... Without diving too far into that, I do recognize people are are in, are like resistant sometimes to new information. I, I recognize that completely. Well, well when it, when it's, it it's not just an ideology. issue of being resistant to new information. It's an issue of having been severely disillusioned with, you know, the sources of, like essentially the the ambient cultural um, situation to which they also associate, you know, most Western sources not without some justice well, true given. but like i i think that it's capable for me to go okay yeah i grew up with a huge amount of uh, i mean i consider myself a communist like like i i, I grew up with huge anti-communist sentiment obviously right. much like every american um and as america. i learned more about history as i've learned all kinds of things i've realized oh yeah actually it's really interesting because um most states in the world engage in this type of behavior um most incredibly rigid power structures uh tend to try and um self 
it, you know, uh, self perpetuate. And of course. That's, every that's... major state that we've every every nation state that we know of has engaged in propaganda. They engage in uh, in all kinds of of, mm -hmm. of of surveillance, all kinds of stuff like this. So I think it's possible for me to go. Oh yeah, you know what? It was probably the fact that it, it's not yeah, like yeah. I don't know. Like I think some people want to be like America is the ultimate evil, and yeah, I would agree. We are currently like the most powerful, but that doesn't mean that any other state has never engaged in these things. In fact, every of single course. state has states that have risen and fallen. Um, have have in, in, engaged in the exact same tactics, the exact same attempts, the yeah. exact same whitewashing of history or whatever that we have done. So I don't think it's necessary for me to be like, oh, well, I must switch over to the the Russians or the Chinese might be were the correct ones actually mm -hmm. because America lied to me. No, I can recognize states lie to everyone that we're right. all getting ripped off by the the local power structures that want to use us and exploit us for their own good. And if that's the case. I would hope to teach other people to come to that conclusion of saying, yeah, you don't need to stand a state. You don't need to defend a state. A state has an apparatus to defend itself. Like the state can literally employ millions of people to defend, to, to hire them to be professional state defenders. Um, Hold on a second, I'm grabbing my cat. And, and so like, I don't, I don't find any need. I don't understand why anybody really needs to engage in like the defense of, of, of states really. Like, well, I don't know. It, it just seems to me like, like a, a lot like of a... it is, again, not not really an individual critique. Like, obviously, yeah. you understand that a lot of this is not. Well, most of what I'm talking about is not directed you, at you at all. Sure, sure. Um, what I'm describing are the the large scale group dynamics that are present. So like fundamentally, one of our tasks and, you know, obviously you're, you're talking about doing this mm -hmm. is to like try and deflate the fandom dynamic. Yeah. And this is an area where again prefigurative politics do Can't find her. are are important. Like we 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 do need to think about um even in cases where it might be tactically appealing to sort of leverage a fandom mm -hmm. to make a point or an anti fandom or whatever. Um we should think hard about doing that because mm -hmm. again we you know, think about you know, what we're actually reinforcing by leaning on the fandoms. I mean, sometimes that, that may be in the least worst option, but it's something to think about very carefully because, again, like part of breaking out of this capitalist hellhole mm -hmm. politically has mm -hmm. to be breaking the back of the fandom dynamic as yeah. well. Well, sh for well, sure. And I mean, well, I would, I guess I would, I would argue. I mean, I don't know. We don't really have to tie this back to the term tanky. We can just kind of talk about it in general. This is kind of free flowing now. Yeah, and I'm like this. I mean, beyond the term tanky, I think that we accomplish that by uh, doing our best within our, you know, within our abilities. I'm a communicator. I'm a, I'm a streamer. I'm a debatey bitch. You know, okay. that's what I do. Um, but like, so I think that like, um, discouraging people like who are, um, you know encroaching in the left or who are trying to garner a following and who are making a bad argument or an argument that I think is bad. Um, then, and then, you know, identifying them and teaching people that no, this is wrong. I think that's like kind of what we have to do. And I think that that's a very worthy thing to do with something like, um, like hardcore state standing and hardcore. Have, just um, to say chat, we have retrieved the cat. Meow. What a good kitty. Oh my God! What a beautiful kitty! Oh my God! Beautiful! <gasps> yeah. Oh my God! So pretty! What's their name? What's your cat's name? I don't think I don't think Famous Horse can hear us. What the wait? What's your cat's name? Uh, this is Jade. She Jade. Is a sweet she is a sweet baby angel. Jade. Hello. We love Jade. What a beautiful oh, meow. That's so you know, cute. She's such a perfect angel. I love her very much. Where I have to take her into the vet because she has dermatitis of some oh, sort. No. She, has some, she has some little scabs on her head. Oh, yeah. my cat used to have that. Oh, the poor thing. She's been very grumpy as a result. Okay, Jade, go eat your food. Oh, 
Maybe it's a grain allergy. Jay. That was my that was my cat's problem was oh, a grain may- allergy. Maybe I I, I, I think it food. might be I think it might be this my sound barrier over here. Oh. This blanket was she started sleeping on top of it, and this blanket was in a basement, so it might have like mothball stuff oh. on it. So I'm gonna wash it tonight. or even a uh, mildew or something. Yeah, it might be. Yeah. It doesn't doesn't smell mildewy, but I'm thinking maybe there's some like moth chemicals on mm-hmm. it, and that's irritating her skin. So I'm gonna wash that tonight. Yeah, could, but I just put it. that together like 20 minutes ago. Dampen the sound. It sounds good. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess what I'm, what I'm, my, my larger point, like beyond just the, the, the term tanky, is like, I, I really think that, uh, I really think that the broader left uh, needs to um, clean up its act in, in Urging terms of being willing to uh, seven say, a nah, no, we also, don't, we don't, I don't think know that most people know what here. tankies are. Um, hence why I, I go have pretty hard against class reductionist and, had to look and up like what hardcore it meant about a month ago um, because like Vosh state stands the term on and stream. or uh, uh, genocide apologists. Um, I don't see them as any different than somebody who would apologize for American acts of genocide. And I, I don't feel okay. like there's any good reason for me to treat them any differently. Um, mm-hmm. And then also like, um, I feel like yeah. we could we could split some hairs on that, but sorry, sure. just continue. Um, yeah. Um, by the way, real quick, uh, thank you so much for the gifted sub, Roaming Gnome Four. Really, really appreciate that. Famous horse, you are now a site sub. Congratulations, oh, you have a super sub. fancy name. I have a Hello, super Zonzi. fancy awesome. name. That's nice. Oh, what's up, Zonzi? How's it going? Got we got all the MLs in chat now. I oh, should yeah? probably oh, turn that off. I should probably turn off TTS during co- convo. You're right. I should. Um, oh well, I- it's all right. <laughs> it's funny. It's, it's all good. I've got it muted now, so it won't do that in the future. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Um, it's, uh, but, but yeah, like, I, I, maybe we could split hairs, perhaps. Um, I, I think there is some uh, distinctions to be drawn between those, those hegemon or those powers. I mean, U.S. is only one that's a hegemon, but, you know, getting more into just the, what you're talking about, that ideology of a state and all that. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, You've probably read Marxist literature. Are you familiar with base and superstructure? Yeah, yeah, and how that functions? For sure. Right. So, you know, if we look at example of, of the Greeks, the Greeks, their mm-hmm. entire, the Athenians at least, you know, their society was a democracy where only, you know, the wealthy white or, you know, wealthy Greek landowners mm-hmm. could have a say. And their society, their ideology, their literature, their culture, uh, their philosophy was all structured around justifying slavery and justifying that difference. You know, there's mm-hmm. plenty of, philosophical text written by greek scholars about why women have tiny little doo-doo brains and can't think good mm, and right. you know that that is superstructure right so mm. when you have a any type of organization when it's a it's a uh, a socialist state a mm. uh some what you might call a state capitalist state a capitalist state any of these they are going to build the structures to always reinforce the state so uh, that's just that's just how it is and at a certain point after that state it's been around 30 40 50 years that um the overt propaganda or ideology that they have created is going to become common sense and that's part of the reason united states americans are so very indoctrinated with anti-communism is because that was coming out of the faucet full blast for 60 years right, ever right. since the end of world war ii you know 70 years for right? sure and, and even now we stay, see anti-communist propaganda non-stop like uh i can't remember what show it was on netflix where somebody mentions Che Guevara or like Castro and the nanny's like that's like wearing a shirt with Hitler on it yeah yeah some cringe ass uh right some cringe ass shit TV. yeah yeah right right and you know yeah. but but that is the ideological apparatus of state and I I would argue that there are distinctions to be made but that's for another episode yeah I mean I I, I think sometimes people go a little too far in in being willing to make apologia for states I mean Again, like a lot of this conversation has been hinging around tanky doomcock because it's so egregious, yeah, yeah. but it's just like, right. I find it like, like hilarious when people are willing to go so far into their defense of the current existing Chinese state that they're like, oh, mm-hmm. you don't, you have, you, you're critiquing the fact that China might not be as you know socialist as they claim or isn't socialist. Right. <laughs> you must be an idiot. And it's just like, right. Okay. Right. That's like, and being that's like, not helpful. Yeah, yeah, it is. So, it's damaging. But, but, uh, it's severely damaging in my yeah. opinion. You know, I, at the end of the day, one of the things that goes on here, though, is mm-hmm. that um, it's actually surprisingly easy to back someone into an absolutist position if you Very if you set easy. up the ball correctly. Yep. yep. Um, and that's a lot of what goes on in the Twitter discourse. Like that's mm-hmm. specifically. 
that's specifically what happened with the necrophilia discourse. Like there's a specific person <laughs> yes, and that's who specifically set that up with the intention of backing people into corners where they were um, defending more and more ridiculous positions on that. Right, right, right. It's easy to do. Uh, I have to say a uh, big credit to uh, Chud and myself. I'm going to be a little uh -huh. arrogant and self jerk oh. here, but, uh, but, 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 uh, for just going, no, fuck that. Actually, I think Vera, yeah. you did as well. I think we, we protested that, that, uh, we actually struck and, and didn't, didn't engage in that discourse, but, uh, good I, for us. Honestly. Yeah, I, di I didn't. Yeah, well, was I wasn't going to be one of the people on the panel. So I think yeah, you yeah. get most of the Wait. credit for that. Oh, okay, Wait, yeah. was this the first, second or third time in the past year necrophilia discourse well, came up on Twitter? Let's was there just a panel say on it's it? never really stopped. Yeah, it's never really stopped. It's I'm oh, pretty sure no. a lot of value for his money. I'm, I'm sorry, no. but I'm pretty oh. sure that we have at least, well, I know we have more than one, but I'm quite sure we have at least one like 4chan poll mole um, uh -huh. in the general sphere of, uh, of Twitter. And, uh, oh. Again, that's again. That's also why I don't really like. Um, that, that's also why I, I I don't take a whole lot of. Uh, yeah. Like I don't feel so bad when I'm I'm gonna dunk on somebody like mm -hmm. a little bit on Twitter who I think is being particularly bad. Um, yeah. Like the necrophilia thing is like the most obvious like like honeypot bullshit ever. It's like please come in. Just, yeah. You can't resist answering this extremely yes. spicy question, and the oh, goal is to generate. Yeah, the goal the is... The discourse will be the death of us all. Yeah, it, it I mean, hence why rule right. number one is do not discourse. Do not discourse. Yeah, do, do not, not discourse. D&D, &D. yeah. But, but uh, yeah, it, it's just one of those things that, you know, certain bait is too appealing for certain people. But, yeah. you know, it's... it's When we talk about moles and stuff like that, I'd say a substantial amount are. I mean, um, no comrades under 4K poll was really helping yeah, putting the steam did. in that. Yeah. Like, you know, and there's been a lot of sus accounts that have come out of no comrades out of 1K, but you know, like, you know, someone like with like a stock photo bio, like, hello comrades, text me picture of your weapons. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I mean, yeah. the, the, to me that like, this is like, when I, I was talking about this necrophilia thing with, with Chud at one point, and I was just like, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the 4chan op that happens every single pride month Every single oh, year, yes. yes, the fucking the, oh. the 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 LGBT P add P. the P, yeah, the add, add the, the pedophilia maps. or whatever, add it's like, yeah, the add maps. the maps or whatever. It's so stupid, and like nobody falls for that one because like not anymore, not anymore. But like nobody falls for that one because first of all, it's obvious, incredibly obvious. But there are more way there are ways to be like sneakier with bait, and I think some. Hey, I mean, the, the whole point is to generate. The entire point is the exact same reason why um, the entire point of all of this, in my opinion, is like to generate uh, like the Vosh, the the the, the Vosh uh, pedophilia clip, the clip chimp that's going around of like people like like saying, oh, Vosh is a pedophile. And it's like, no, you, you asked a deliberately uh, in the middle of a live stream, you asked a, a slanted question that's very difficult that requires like if you want to actually go into the the the. Uh, the details of like, sure. oh, why are you, like, like, uh, you know, this whole fucking bullshit. It's designed to make you sound bad and to make you clip uh -huh. to be sound to sound bad because it's a, it's don't, asking don't questions. Yeah, don't fall for the bait. Same thing goes for fucking the the necrophilia. The whole thing. You know what? You could have. There is actually. Guess what? Believe it or not, there is a philos philosophical discussion in in your brain that you could have that would be a whole bunch of thought experiments you can do that with literally any controversial topic in fact yep. it's like almost I just yeah it's almost fun it's like it's almost a thing of fun that philosophy students do like the eating baby discourse like the the like would you eat human meat there's all these kinds of like ridiculous questions you can ask that are designed to be prov like ridiculously provocative in order to spur like thought experiments but the place for that is not twitch Especially when you're trying to do advocacy, and people don't realize definitely that. Definitely not Twitter. Uh, definitely not Twitter. And look, people I mean, are people are following. I literally was mentioning these as examples of bait, and people in my chat are eating the bait. You yeah, bastards! I just, saw, I just saw some people eating the bait. Like, oh, like, I would eat human meat. Yeah, no, shut the fuck up. Shut the up. point is, I'm no, tricking you. Don't into... say that. <laughs> I'm tricking yeah. you into an optically I, bad one. Right, anyway, it, it, to to right. connect this though to um, the sort of original topic. Like the necro discourse wasn't the only thing that this particular kid has started. Like yeah. it's not as uh, prevalent, but there is a whole th discourse around defending Pol Pot that uh, ah, the yes, kid yes, was also responsible yeah. for. Oh God, we love we love that. And 
like the bottom line is that I don't think it's realistic for everyone on the online left to become really literate in group dynamics and like propaganda at that level. Yeah. But people who do understand those dynamics, like that kid, you know, he's not like some psyops expert, I don't yeah, think. Yeah. But he understands like the basic principles very well. Mm -hmm. Um we need to build a lot more literacy and awareness around the group dynamics mm -hmm. um, in the online left mm -hmm. in order to be able to dispel these things and to be able to um, like not accidentally add Eat more lift it. to them, so to speak. Yeah. Right. Maybe that's um, the next thing. Maybe the next thing I need is the uh, the Twitch code for Ant for not getting baited into talking about things that will damage your career. There we go. Yeah. The Twitter code does a pretty good job. I have to say, I've yeah. uh, I've avoided landmines for like like six months since I invented the Twitter code. It's been, you know it's been that, that, that's ooh, smart. so good. That's smart. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I actually should have brought that up as earlier as a good example of you know the sort of measures that work and you know to some extent other people have adopted that code as well so it's not just you as an individual yeah um even in the case we're talking about about um you know dipping out of the necro stream mm -hmm. um that was a coordinated action among multiple people mm -hmm. it wasn't just an isolated thing yeah, i didn't even know this was a thing that was a while ago it's it, yeah. it was kind of like a one-off i don't know it was it was uh yeah i mean it was well, well, the, yeah. the thing is you didn't hear about it because we were successful yeah we were successful in coordinating a, like a, a basically strike i mean it did it did end up the conversation did go forward but it was just a kind of a dud honestly yeah tiny audience yeah. you know no it didn't really go anywhere yeah and and the funny thing the thing that was the biggest red flag in my opinion was like how unbelievably excited all of the right wingers were to discuss that topic and how oh, all of no. the lefties were like hmm that's well, how you know that that the right wingers had proposed the topic. Oh, they did. Yeah, I didn't even know that. Well, there you go. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. Well, I I think we've talked about a lot of really interesting stuff. Um. Of course, yeah. I respect you both very much. Um. Obviously. Um. I really enjoyed having this conversation. Um. Danke schön. Yeah, it was great. And uh, that was good. Yeah, and uh, thank you for both being willing to kind of come on and and and, and discourse mm -hmm. off of Twitter with me because that was great. Oh, ho, ho. Um, and yeah, I'm sure we have some Much very better here than the hell site. Oh, of course, yeah. Discourse uh, wait, on Twitter is oh, yeah. horrible, but yeah. and it's make automatically antagonistic. And I'm sure you know overall we have way more in common than we do different. Yeah, I think that's true too. I mean, uh, yeah, and it's just and, hard to see when we focus on the fights, right? Yeah, and the thing is like. Uh, I do think that that's the case. And and the thing that I would like to see, and, and this is more addressed towards you, Famous Horse, um, and mm -hmm. other uh, people who share your, your general tendency than necessarily Vera, because like, obviously Vera and I are a little closer, you know, on that, on that, if, if, we, if you chart us, like, or whatever. But the thing is, like, I would like to see, my goal is mm -hmm. hopefully uh, going forward to make it clearer to people the difference between like actually principled like ml types and people who are basically just stands for any state that that is not america that's willing to right. say that it's communist for whatever reason um okay. because like i do have a huge problem with that and i do think that that um i do think that some people like on a larger level i do think that um like from an outsider to the to the ml you know line or whatever um, I do think that MLs could probably improve um, their advocacy outside of like people who are really into communism um, by by disassociating with like some of these really loud, really like genocide denial -y types and just being willing to say, fuck you. Like, we're not going to stand for that kind of shit. Um, I, but but yeah. by and large, like, too prong, though. what's that? It, it, two prongs. Two yeah, prong. yeah. I mean, of course. But I mean, there's and try to disengage from that defensive. Oh, of course. Right? Absolutely. I think that I think that like, um, yeah, a hundred percent. I think like like it would be it's beneficial for all of us, regardless of your tendency to be focusing on the future right now. People right. need a vision of what we're actually trying to build. And the past, as mired as it is in various states propaganda, including predominantly the United States propaganda, 
um like uh like uh all of all of that like is very muddling and confusing for people and i don't think that mm -hmm. that is nearly as imp it's important for us to understand it as the people presenting the information but it's not necessarily important for every single person who's trying who we're trying to convince of our ideology to understand yeah. every facet of the of the history of each thing i think well, we should what, focus going saying. forward just yeah just ignore it ignore it yeah. entirely and that's what i'm saying that you know this like you do when somebody brings up the stuff whether or not you love the ussr and love everything about it or you mm -hmm. fucking hate it just when that comes up disengage disengage yeah. because we need to focus on building the left right now because we are going to start losing momentum yeah. Going into the Biden administration, a lot of the people who are less active are gonna, you know, go back to brunch and go back to eating their talkies or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. And we need to maintain this momentum that we've built. And the last thing we should be doing is getting into internecine debates or explaining yeah. ourselves or backpedaling, right? And, you know yeah, and with that said though, I think that uh, I will continue to encourage a firm line when it comes to stuff like class reductionism I mean, and and, oh, and genocide denial those are things that i don't consider to be um <laughs> non negotiable my partner says hey talkies are awesome <laughs> you know kind what talkies are awesome but when it becomes a part of your personality with true. Biden, yeah up. yeah true 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 um <laughs> but yeah so yeah that's more or less like my opinion and as long as people are doing that then i think that we have a shared vision of the future and we can work together really well and i will work very i i am willing to work in fucking tight concord with people who have who have a shared you know or at least a mostly shared vision of the future but uh, I cannot on, on work. That, yeah, but yeah. So, um, yeah. You should check out uh, an acquaintance of mine. I don't actually know the guy at all. He just knows one of my best friends. Sure. Um, Iron Prole, who runs uh, From the Heart Pacific Northwest. He's a like he's the kind of person who's like hardline ML, and he has spent the last year building this massive mutual aid organization from That's the ground awesome. up, where they're they're running on like a twenty thousand dollar a month budget now, all from Holy donations. Shit. That's fantastic. Housing, you know, getting tents, food, delivering probably 200, 300 meals a day. Um, we're going to be doing a charity stream for them soon. But, you know, that's the kind of stuff that's inspiring, right? You know, he's working with both MLs, anarchists, sock Dems, all these people to actually institute change. Because, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a leftist or not. Once you start talking to people in the neighborhood and you make their lives better, it doesn't matter the ideology, right? Yep. You're there for them. And that's what counts. Yep. They know that you care. Material conditions. 100%. And I've, yeah. Yep. I've, I've said this many times, and I've, I think that we can all agree on this. Any person mm -hmm. will agree. The material, being able to address the material circumstances of people will go. Front and center. Uh, exactly. If you can help somebody right now, that is going to that is going to prove yeah. to them that you can deliver results more effective exactly. than anything else. Exactly. And, 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 you know, when we spend so much time um, in the weeds talking about our differences in ideology mm. or splitting hairs or you know whatever that's time that we could spend um just increasing our reach overall or working to make people's lives better yeah and i i think yeah. there's room and for discussion ties but, yeah. into something else oh, yeah, for sure, too, sure, sure. which Go for is it. that um a lot of the activity that the online left does is focused on getting converts first Mm -hmm. Like, you know, trying to convince yeah. people in the marketplace of ideas, as it were. And really what we need at this stage is not converts so much as supporters. And the best yeah, way really. to get... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this... And the best way to get supporters is to materially make their lives better. Yeah, I agree. Um, and and I think, like, I, I agree with you in that analysis. I think there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, like... Uh, like focus on de-radicalizing or something or some similar thing of like converting people from the right. Um, and I really think that's the wrong focus. I often tell people yeah, like yeah. it's more about there's a, an incredibly like a, a broad swath of America that's totally politically inactivated. They're totally deactivated. They don't have any connection whatsoever. And well, perhaps their like default position is to, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, it's absolutely intentional. Well, you know, th these people have been disengaged and more, they only more ideologically. I talked about this whole thing on stream last night, why people vote the way they do and stuff like mm. that. But, you know, a lot of these people are totally disengaged. And I think uh, we would have much better success um, through materially improving people's lives and bringing in people who are like the kind of with incoherent beliefs because they don't actually have a theory that we would be bringing trying to convert a conservative or even trying to con convert um, a dedicated liberal, right? Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. And, and honestly, I think there's a certain um, 
macho tendency that drives this um, desire to convert the hard cases, as it were. Yeah. Like fundamentally, yeah, right. the, the right wingers are a small population, and like fundamentally, basically almost nobody is going to come out of the right unless their situation is already such that they have some deep dis dissatisfaction with it, especially right. under these circumstances. Which I, I think can well, certainly I... be exploited. Um, I, I certainly think there's some value in in mm -hmm. in creating some content, but I, I do think that it would be it would be a mistake to hyper focus on so, that when okay. there's just a gulf, an absolute lake of people all around us who simply need a vision that they're not being given right. by the right or the left at the moment. They're just Absolutely. sitting there, just going just, along with whatever happens to them, which I, right I, now I is COVID. To, <laughs> I used to, I used to canvas. I canvas for a solar company. I go door to door in really poor rural parts of Connecticut. And I spent more time radicalizing people, just talking to them, asking them, you know, is there something I can help you, you with other than, you know, going running errands for people, just helping them out any way I could. And I probably, Radicalize way more people just doing that than any ad campaign the Democrats ran in oh, those times. Of course, times, you for know? Sure. But like, I, I think with the right wingers, though, the reason people focus on so much is th there's so much clout in that. If I'm the yeah. guy who uh, owned this conservative with his own logic and made him go like Aaron Sorkin, like, oh my God, you were right the whole time, you know, there's a lot mm. of clout in that. And I think we also need to be very suspicious of people who were like, I was in the alt-right pipeline and then all of a sudden I turned around, check out my YouTube channel, I have 100,000 followers. You know, mm. like... I think there's yeah, due skepticism I think there's a lot there. Of, I, th I think there's a lot of people that are taking advantage of the popularity as well to smuggle in right-wing ideas maybe i mean i think there's like or, or not even intentionally taking advantage necessarily but the other problem you do have if you are uh recruiting a lot of people who are reactionaries yeah there's a bunch of social reaction that you also need to get them mm -hmm. out of and there's right now right. no mentoring structure really set up to do that yeah so in mm -hmm. practice what's happened okay. after the past couple years of you know, converting people out of the alt right pipeline, let's say, is now we got a bunch of fucking Nazbols. Well, yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, right. Yeah. These people who have incoherent beliefs, they they are like, well, SJW id poll is bad. I don't like trans people, but I think we should have healthcare. You know, like people with these insane views, um, and then they're coming in and they're bringing those views in with them. And then you have situations like Amy Therese, who all of a sudden mm. has a huge following when she's talking nonstop about how BLM burned down cities yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. And what she's saying is indistinguishable from a Nazi. For but sure. She's, but she says uh, the right things about the Democrats, so people listen to her. Yeah, and, this, is, know, the, that, this that, is the anti the anti libs. It was the, the no, I think I think Vosh did do Vosh did a good video about that recently about the anti libs uh -huh. people who are more anti lib than they are actually standing for anything where it's just oh right. I got to oh. say the right things about the Democrats right. but then you look a little deeper and it's like well what is your actual worldview and it's like one step away from a white ethno state and it's like oh yeah that's right. great right. yeah that's wait, great wait wait what and I, I think it's more than just not being anti lib I think these people also have a very strong reactionary belief structure. Um, but they try to couch it in the right language and say the right things and be mad at the wrong, right targets. Like my friend Samantha Pritchard, um, everybody, all these people are super transphobic just to her specifically right. because she's an acceptable target. She's been marked as someone that it's okay to harass. Mm -hmm. And therefore, these people say what they really think about every trans person to her. Right. And, yeah. and, you know, under the guise of I'm owning her. And, and that's how these beliefs get smuggled in. But that's a whole other story. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, um, anyway, it was wonderful um, talking with you. Oh, yeah. I have to do a drama mama investigation Ooh. into the latest update on the uh -huh. class reductionist from PA arc. Um, in which I'm going to do exactly what I said I was going to do earlier in here and go against, uh, argue and rail against people who I think are, uh, doing what you're talking about, which is, uh, smuggling fucking shitty ideas in and grifting okay. off of other people. So yeah, there we go. We love grifting. We love grifting. Yeah, got a lot of grifters out there. But yeah, sure are. um, so yeah, anything, can you, can y'all, both of you plug, well, I have your stuff up on the screen, but please plug yourselves real quick before you go. And if you have anything else you want to say, then just hit me with it. Era, after you. Yeah. I guess I do have one final thought also, which is that one of the things that makes the online left susceptible to 
more susceptible to a lot of this stuff is the sort of my the enemy of my enemy is my friend thinking. Mm -hmm. So like people will see someone go after, um, you know, some, some person or some belief that they think is bad and they sort of welcome them into the fold at that point. Boom. And that, like, I think fundamentally we need to be a lot more thoughtful in the way that we develop trust essentially like not, you know, inherently suspicious of everyone, but also not as ready to, you know, put everyone on the same level of trust as soon as they say something we agree with. Yeah. Yep. I I think you're right about that. I think that is something that people need to be, you know, there's a tendency to sort of um, uh, rally around people who are firing shots at the same enemy as you. I I agree with you on that. Yeah. I mean, uh, the whole joke, Mike Pompeo, welcome to the resistance. Yeah. 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 But I I think that's right. Sorry. Yeah. That's, that was sort of my closing thought Um, in terms of like self, plugging uh i'm ask vera on twitch ask vera ttv on twitter i do not have a youtube channel worth talking about yet but maybe eventually fair enough and that's about it for me okay well it's been good talking with you um i am famous horse i stream almost every night on twitch Twitch twitch.tv famous horse streaming right now gonna wrap it up a little bit i'm also on twitter at Famous Horse, I am currently in poster jail for saying that Biden should parody the president of Scientology, but I will return stronger. And uh, YouTube is Famous Horse as well. We do political commentary and ghost videos. I am materialist in analysis, anti-materialist in believing in ghosts. But yeah, come, uh, come <laughs> by. We have, yeah, we have a lot of good guests. Last week we had Ellie Valley. This week we had Vincent Bevins. We have Jake Flores, the comedian, coming on Saturday. I'm going to be oh, wearing sick. a maid outfit during that. So Pog. Yeah, I, lo- I lost, I, I lost the sub goal. We got 50 subs. So I have to wear a maid outfit and I think I'm going to like it a Wait, little that's bit. That's a win. You didn't, you won the sub goal. Right. I won the, I won the sub goal. Oh no. I have to wear a maid outfit. The thing I didn't want to and do. And you got oh, 50 no. subs. Oh no. Oh no. I'm wearing thigh highs. Damn. I will say I was originally skeptical about this whole femboy thing, but I think I'm yeah. coming around. You're coming hey, around. there we go. Oh, well, we'll see when you see me in a maid outfit. We'll see what yeah. people's opinions on femboys are there. Maybe I'll shave a little bit for it too and wear my contacts. Hey, but anyways, I'm go. Famous Horse on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. I'm still streaming out. Give me a follow. It makes Ben Shapiro talking about uh, wet ass P words play. So we always love that. All right, but thank you so much for having me come on. Of course, of course. Uh, thank you both, and I will talk right, to you both soon. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see you soon. Yeah, thank you for having us on. Bye. Um, to everyone, bye bye. There we go. There we go. See, that was good. That was good as fuck. That was a good ass conversation. Um, hell yeah, that was a good conversation. See, I feel like we had a lot of thing, cool things to talk about. We sorted it out. There were certain. I mean, listen, there's certain differences, but ultimately I feel like we did make some progress. They laid out their concerns with use with the word with the uh, word tanky. Um, I laid out my re- reservations with with like not using it, but I think it was good. Yeah, so I don't know, I thought it was good. I think I learned some things from it, and I do think that there's a, some concern that's valid there. Um, thank you so much, Lodic. I really appreciate that. 